Hi, this is Joseph Kerr, and welcome to my storybook. Today I'm going to read this book called Michelle Obama, the First Lady of the White House, when President Barack Obama had been elected. Let's begin to the story of about Michelle Obama. Faint and slowly are all the way. People are draw people are draw to those who walk in faint spotlight. <clears throat> Whether they are known for great accomplishments or for notorious deeds. The lights are the famous procure public interest and attracts and attract attention. Perhaps because their experiences seem in some ways so different from like in other ways, so similar to our own newspapers, magazines, and television regularly capitalizing on the fascination, fascination with celebrity by running profiles of famous people. For example, <clears throat> television programs such as Entertainment Tonight, The Vote, all the while programming to stories about entertainment and entertainers, Magazines such as people fill their pages with stories of their private lives of famous people, even newspapers, news magazines, and television news frequently deliver into the lives of well known personalities. Despite the number of articles and programs, few, few provide more than a superfinancial glass at their subjects. Listeners, people in the news series of authors, long readers, and deeper look into the lives of today's newsmakers. The influences that have shared them, shaped them, and the impact they have had in their fields of the invaders and on the other people's lives. The subjects of the series have so many disciples and walks of life. They include authors. Musicians, athletes, politician leaders, entertainers, and posters, and others who have made a mark on more on modern life, and who, in many cases, in many cases, will continue to do so for years to come. These barclays, barclays are more than festival colors. Each book. Emphasize the contributions, accomplishments, or deeds that have brought fame or novelty to the environment, and shows how that that person has influenced mobile life. Authors probably have their subjects in a list on setting their light. For example, Bill Gates, the Comforter, and the chief executive officer. The software giant Microsoft, Microsoft has been instrumental in making a, in making the personal computers the most valuable tool of the mobile age. Food dispute his business server, his preparation, or his tech, technical expenses. Let critics say he is ruthless in his dealings with competitors and. Drive more, <coughs> drive more, by his desire to maintain Microsoft's dominance in the, the computer, in addition to them by interesting in future technology. In these books, long readers will include inspiring stories about we people who achieve success despite murders as obstacles. Oprah Winfrey, the most powerful, most watched. And wellness woman on television today spent the first six years of her life in the care of her grandparents when he when her unwilling mother sought work in a better life as well. Her indignities were color about problem catering, pregnancy at age fourteen, rape, and sexual abuse. It's awesome documents. 
and supports his own his or her work with the algorithm of primary and secondary sources recorded, taken from diaries, letters, speechless, and interviews, all quotes are foot footnoted to show readers exactly how and where Barclay is to buy their information and provide guidance for free search results. The core teasings teases in Lebanon, the text by giving readers eyewitness, eyewitness views of life and accomplishments of each person covered in the people in the new series. In addition, each book in the series includes Photographs, photo photographs, unknown biographical, biographical, timeless, and component analysis in depth. For both the council's reader and the student resources, resources, the people in the news series offers insight into the lives of today's news markets. People who share, people who see in the way we live, work, and play in the mortgage. age. A first lady like no other. On February 18, 2009, Michelle Obama turned the East Wing of the White House into a classroom by hosting a celebrity of Black History Month. In a, in a fundamental lecture to nearly 200 sets, 200 sets in 7th grade students from Washington, D.C. Schools, Obama detailed the role the White House has played in African American history. She told students that from 1793 to 1800, black slaves helped build the hoods, only the building that is the president's home and officer and office. <coughs> Obama also explained that in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Ecclesiastical Appeal in Sacramento, and is not an appeal, proclaiming confirmation in the White House, in the White House room that was later named after him. She also told students that in the 1960s, President John F. Kennedy and President Lyndon B. Johnson, each met with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other black leaders in the White House to help black gain, blacks gain the civil rights that many southern states were still denying, denying them. When the students told Obama they already knew that facts, that facts, she was delighted. So you guys know, no history. That's a good thing, she said. That means your parents and teachers are doing their jobs. Obama then asked to the leech if they knew why her husband, Barack Obama, was also making history. When many students tried to respond to her questions, Obama asked a girl who was yelling louder than anyone else to get the answer. The student rose to her feet and explained that he's the first African American, he's the first African American president of the United States of America. What Michelle Obama did not ask was if the students knew that she was making history, too. As the nation's first African American first lady, a milestone in African American history, Barack Obama's inauguration as the first African American U.S. president on January 20. 2009, sharing the racist that many people believe might never be broken because of racism. <clears throat> His election was seen as an important symbol step forward for the African Americans, for most who, for most of the last five centuries, have been treated unfairly and sometimes brutally by whites in the United States. In 1609, the first African American arrived in the land that will become the, the United States. A ship brought them from African to Virginia. Then a British colonel and they were sold as slaves. 
when colonists won that of freedom in 1783 from Great Britain and created the United States. The new nation allowed slavery to continue even through the Declaration of Independence. Sl on independence, written in 1776, states that all men are created. Although the government ended slavery in 1865, many African Americans <coughs> were denied basic rights and discriminated against because of the color of their skin for another century. Blacks in many states, states during that period were not allowed to vote. Living in, uh, living in errors, revulsion for whites, resolve for whites, or lose restaurants, restaurants, hotels, and other public places that were, that were reserved for whites. Barack Obama's unconscious never suffering such cruel treatment. His father was in the main event from Carolina and his mother was, was white. But Michelle Obama's dead. In, in 1850, James Robinson, Michelle's great great grandfather, was born a slave in South Carolina. Her family lived in Senegal, Senegal South Carolina, until her grandfather, Fresco Robinson Jr., moved to Chicago in the north. In the early 1930s, in South Carolina, mm -hmm. her isolation was denied because basis rights, like voting, and were forced to live under segregation in the North, in the North, and other Northern states allowed blacks more freedom than in certain states. But members of her family were still discriminated against in where they could live and in how to practice for jobs. A fresh an equally first lady, Michelle Obama's slave ancestry is the most dramatic aspect of her family history, U.S. Representative James E. Campbell. A South Carolina Democrat claims that having a district of slave as first lady as in a meaningful historically, historically as her husband's stature as the first black president. Claiborne has even pissed that, me that Obama's ancestral can help ease the standards of the, the nation's slave past. I believe she could play as poor father a role, and her husband could, if not more. So, it will allow us an opportunity to get beyond some of our peculiar need notions, some of our prejudices. Although some African Americans had trouble accepting the slaves' past in their own history, a brother has embraced it as. It is it's a symbol of how blacks and whites had a shared history, she said. She says, an important message in our this journey is that we're all linking to our histories of blood and survival in this community, in this country. Someone there was a slave owner or a white family in my great grandfather's time that after slavery ended, Get him a place, a home, to have him build a life. That again lead to me. So who would, so who were those people? Or what organ did just as much a part of my history as my great great grandfather? The color of this whole skin and family history make Obama a first lady like not other in the nation's history. Of job history also made her equally among first ladies. Obama is an authority and continually walking even after having two daughters. In fact, she did not quit her job la her last job. Vice President for the University of Chicago Medical Casino until her husband was elect president. A 
famous race in history of how work can also make her a world model, a world model for African Americans and our work mothers. An inspiration. During her husband's campaign for president, Obama visited many states to help him win the election. At many of her appearances, Black told her that she and her husband had already inspired them by embarrassing them to think they could do great, great things too. Despite the color of their skin and a beautiful polo, polo in South Carolina, Obama met a 10 year old girl who told her that if Barack won that election, then it means I can't amaze anything for myself. The little girl then began crying with happiness at that thought. Obama is also not in 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 middle by working mothers of all races who face the same problems she does in trying to care for her children and hold down a job. In many speechless to women to women during the campaign. Obama explained how hard she has struggled to be both a mother and career woman in engagements over whatever she was doing a good job at both those difficult tasks. Linton Brainless is an officer who was first lady Jacqueline Kennedy's father is an officer who was first lady Jacqueline Kennedy's socialist secretary and she was stabbed from 1960 to 1963. Barrett believes Obama will continue to impress women as First Lady because she will have to jiggle down the many duties of that position while still raising her two dark children. Barrett says that's where she can inspire women of today. Will Frank Callan trying to walk the way up in a war and being compassionate and popularity. But she is always going to back to her kids. She will help women realize that a woman can jangle that the two. That she can find the division between family and job and experiences joy in both places. Chapter one Growing up in Chicago. In 2017, when Barack Obama began running for president, he spent time during each campaign appearance telling his life story so voters could get to know him. Michelle Obama did the same thing in city after city around the country. She talked about with pride about her parents, especially about the wonderful way her parents have raised her. In January of 2008, Obama told our lawyers and diners in New Hampshire that deep down inside, I'm still that little girl who grew up in the south and on the south side of Chicago. Everything that I think about and do is shopping around the life I live in that long order that my father was so hard to provide for us. Obama always went into attention that her parents both play an important role and created the woman she became. She has sought Paul intentionally that my lines of life, how I see the world, is that my background, my upbringing. Fresher and Moella Robinson. Michelle Levon Robinson was born in Chicago, Illinois, on January 17, 1964. Her parents well, Frieza Robinson to Dodd, and she had a water plant in Portland, and more as Shields Robinson, and traditional mom who stayed home to raise her children. Obama's brother Craig is 18 months older than she is, but they were so close in age and looked so much alike that people all often thought they were twins. Obama says her parents created a tight night loving family atmosphere that made her feel protected. My dad and my mom pouring in everything they had into me and Craig. It was the greatest great gift 
Shah could ever receive. Never doubted her for a single minute that you will love and cherish and have a place in this world. The family we tell the upper flat or a small two story hall in Chicago South Shore or went on for the great one. He lived on the fourth floor and taught piano. The flat has so little space that fees are built and pantry in the living room. So Michelle and Craig could have their own bedrooms. Chicago in the 1960s was one of the nation's most segregated cities in the South Shore. It got its name from the, its prominent to Lake Michigan. Was one of was one hour in which blacks had always lived. Adult sunset since the South Shore was were troubled by gangs in the 1960s. The Robinsons lived near the University of Chicago hospitals in a bell neighborhood that included some whites. Obama organized in her dad when she was growing up. In addition to being a love to being a loving father, Frieza, who also had a hero to to her because he continued working despite being handicapped by multiple accessories and disease that slowly disintegrates muscle control. In his life, Frieza had been a fine athlete. He bossed he bossed and swelled, but the disease began robbing him of his barbary and hit the barbary in an asthma dog. At first, he walked with a limp. He granted that daily he had more his but granted that he had more trouble getting around, which forcing him at times to lose a cane, crunches, and even a more desire for a shell. A bummer in rain <coughs> in mind of her father because despite the illness, he keep walking at the water plant and never complain <coughs> and never complain about his medical problem, Obama said. My dad was all rock. And although he was diagnosed with multiple scissors in his early thirties, he was all provider. He was all champion. Our hero. If was he if he was in pain, he never let on. He never stopped smiling and laughing. Even when struggling to button his shirt, even when losing two kings on to get himself across the room to get my mom a kiss, he just woke up a little early and he woke up a little harder. Robinson also is es- es- it's sad to his children to work hard and live up to his sight high to and live up to his high standards of behavior. When they fail to do that, he will not raise his voice or beat them. Instead, Robinson will still coldly, coldly at his children and tell them how much they had disappointed him. But Shell and Craig love and respect and doubt that so much that they felt bad when he did that. Obama said that we'll even start crying because you never want to dis- be dis- to disappoint him. We will be we will be bawling. Luckily for Obama, she really made her dad cry. She was a well behaving child. He really caused her parents any worry. Obama's childhood. When Michelle was little, she did things most long girls do. She had an easy bake over and she had doll hearts and African American Bobby and Ken dolls, unlike most little girls. However, Michelle began learning to read when she was only four years old. She wanted to lean because she was jealous that Craig was already reading. Once she took one of his books, and told her mother she was going to teach her to read. When Michelle fell at that impossible task, her mom taught her how to read. Accordingly to Maria Robinson, Michelle was in a tangled tangled, independent little girl who was not afraid and intelligent. Michelle was in a tangent, independent little girl 
who was not afraid to try new things and who manages her own life even at long age. Robinson said, I always say Michelle raised herself from about nine years old. She had her head on straight very early. One aspect of that adult approach to life was her decoration. To learn and to play, to play the piano, which her great aunt taught Michelle how to play. Michelle said, Michelle said, Robinson said Michelle would practice the piano for so long you had to call, you had to tell her to stop. The Robinsons live a quite fairly old winter life. They ate their meals together and often playing board games like Chinese checkers and Marbley, according to her brother. Michelle, Michelle hated to leave so Michelle hated to, hated to leave so much that when they played games, he was he will sometimes let her win so she would not quit. Craig said, Craig says, her sister is a poor sport. She didn't like to lose. The Robinson children had had a lot of time for games and for reading because their parents only allowed them to watch one hour on television each day. As the children grew older, some of their free time was spent doing households courses. Every Saturday, Michelle had to totally clean the bathroom from the mopping and the floor to scrub for scrub being the toilet. For scrubbing in the toilet. The siblings also an alternately washing dishes. With Michelle doing down Tuesdays, Thursday and Saturday nights. During summer vacations, the family took trips to Duke Happy Holiday Duke's Happy Holiday Resort in Michigan or to visit grandparents and other relatives in South Carolina. As a long girl, Michelle liked fashion ballet clothes and accessories. She was able to indulge that passion after she began earning money babysitting. But when Michelle came home one day with a bad back by coach, her mother was upset. She had spent so much money. She had spent so much money for the desertion post. Michelle defended her purchase, claiming that the bag was so vulnerable she could lose it for any occasion and would not have to buy several other posts. Robinson said that was one of the few times she ever had to criticize her daughter. If she ever did do anything naughty, she was smart enough not to let me find out about it, says Robinson. A good steward. Both of Michelle's parents believe a good education for their children be successful even though the new parent had attended college. Their partner Craig and Michelle to study hard and even pursue their school officers, officials. To let them skip second grade, they felt Michelle and Craig already knew so much that they needed to advance to a higher grade to be generous. After skipping into second grade, both children continued to wait among the brightest students in their classes. Michelle, however, discovered that it was not easy following Craig's throughout the local school system. The problem was that. Craig was such a gifted student that teachers of almost automatically expressing in the same sort of excitement from her. Michelle tried to keep up with her brother, but it was not as easy for her to get top grades as it had been for Craig Robinson Abandoned. She was disappointed in herself. She needs to have a little bit but a trouble with tests. She, so she did whatever she had to to make up for that. I'm sure it wasn't physically because she was hard working and 
She had a brother who could pass the test just by carrying a book under her arm, has on. But you are around someone like that, even if you are okay, you want to be a good or better. Thus, Michelle had to work harder to get the same grade her brother brought home so easy. Michelle worked so hard that she even expressed cred. She said, I'll come home from basketball practice, and she'll be watching. I sat down on the couch and watched TV. She'll keep walking. When I turn off the TV, she'll still be walking. The hard work enabled Michelle to excel in school. By the time she was in sixth grade, she was in the governor in the governor class by Brian Marlena and Mary School which today is known as Buckshot Map and Sciences and Academy, in a Gifford class. Michelle studied in France for three years and took advantage of biology classes at Kenny King College. Broccoli classmate Clark Davis Patterson said Michelle, Michelle their lab work that included identifying the muscles of rats that had been dissected. This is not what normal seventh graders were getting. Patterson said, Michelle performed so well that she feels second in her about one more graduating class of the community and a hundred students. Michelle now has to decide which high school to attend. Adult a neighborhood public school was only a block away from the Wapperson home. Queer had an in Mount Carroll, a proper boys school with a top in Canada standards and an outstanding sports program. The landlord was important for Queer and Terrell in six foot five, six foot five inches, basketball player who would become good enough to win an athletic scholarship to college. Michelle also decided to bypass the neighborhood neighborhood school and attend Winter M. Lawn, Chicago's first Mount Margaret High School. She used Rebel, she used Rebel Whitney M. Lawn, even though the school was so far away that she had to leave home at 6 a.m. They were to make the 90 minute trip by bus and ever that and very train. But she is at the three hour round trip command command because she knew the school's strong academy program will get her the best education possible. Life at Whitney M. Long. Like many other big cities, Chicago in the nineteen seventies was trying to intimidate its schools to learn white and black to learn white and black students away from schools and then in syndicated neighborhood neighborhoods. The Chicago districts began opening market schools. Although Whitney M. Lawn was in town at school, it still had more black students than white students. Among the students were the children of the city's most influential in African Americans, including Santana Jackson. The daughter of Baptist minister and civil rights actress Jesse Jackson. Going to Whitney M. Lawn separate, Obama not only equal Kelly for her old neighborhood, but as also coaching her because many of her father students families were better off Finn County their hers was. Like her, most of Whitney M. Lawn's students believe it wasn't important to get a good education, but in her neighborhood and other parties of Chicago. Obama sometimes met young blacks who hated the school and sometimes walking and follow blacks who studying hard and will get and will get students. Obama began trying to hide her school line so she would not be picking it on. She called this Social tactics. Speaking of two languages, Obama explains, "Well, long growing up is 
that if I were, I'm not going to get my butt kicked every day after school. I can't flaunt my talent and my talent in front of pillars who are struggling with a lot, with a whole range of things. You have to be smart without acting smart. Obama began her high school in 1977. Two years after Whitney and Lawn opened, England's teacher Dangling Bowland says in that period in Chicago, the tradition of leaving one's neighborhood to go to high school was very new, and a person had to be very gusty to do it. It was a weird experience to come here. Obama's entanglement and change in commitment to hard work helped her answer again in Kennedy County, classmates Michelle Early Early Tonville remembers Michelle as someone who was committed to getting a good education. She says it was it was obviously obvious that she had girls and she was she was going places. She didn't goof off like some other students. She was in the law of horror class. She was on a very educated, focused track. Obama was studying hard so she could be successful in life. That attitude helped Obama become the star to it. She made the honor wall all four years. Because a member of the National Horror Scholarship, he even took a college level classes offered by the University of Illinois. In her senior year, Obama was elected student counselor treasurer. She also participated in the dance program, but she was not to compete in sports even though she was an athlete, athlete, athlete and that tall enough at nearly six feet to play tall to play to tall to play basketball like her brother. Obama also had a boyfriend in high school. She did it David Upshots for two nearly two years. Obama leaves Chicago. David Upshots grew up knowing Obama because his family lived near her South Shore home. He was Obama's boyfriend from midway through her journey there until she graduated in nineteen eighty one. Although Upshots liked Obama, he admitted that he was not ready as a teacher to have a serious relationship with her or any or any other girl. Upshaw says, I was a screwed up, I was a screwed up, plain and simple. At that point, I just didn't take my life or my future seriously, but Michelle knew what she wanted, and at the graduation, she was off to apprenticeship to. I couldn't stand in her way. I wish the best for Michelle because she always been a wonderful person. Aunt Schultz took Michelle to the Whitney M. Lawn Center Barn. Lil's Larry in the interview was a new with a newspaper reporter. Aunt Schultz said that he only had dime reconnection of the dance and could not remember if he kissed her. He said it was one of their final dates because that fall of Obama left Chicago to the 10 Princeton anniversary. Chapter 2 College and a Career If it had not been for her brother, Michelle Obama might never have attended Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey. Princeton is one of Ivy League schools. A small group of dispensers and private universities in the northeast of the United States, while students are mainly from rich white families in the early 1980s. Three African Americans even dreaming of attending an Ivy League school because tuition and academic standards were so high. But when Craig Robinson received an athletic scholarship to Princeton, Obama decided to go there. Two, she says, that was really my first exposure to the possibility of the Ivy League. It wasn't that I couldn't get in, or I couldn't die, drive, 
or I couldn't survive. I didn't know to even what, what that. That wasn't the version that I could see for myself because I couldn't see anybody around me doing that. When Obama decided to on Princeton, she went to a guidance counselor at Whitney M. Lawn in November of 1980 for help in fulfilling on Princeton's application form. Application form. The counselor told Obama that hotel scores were not high enough to get into Princeton and regulation and help her. Obama did not let the counselor discourage her. She believed that if her brother could go to Princeton, she could, too. She says, I know him, and I know his study happens. And I was like, I can't, I can do that. Two, what might have, what might have kept the counselor, counselor from in courses with Obama to push her dream was to brief that there were the some people, blacks as well as whites, that African Americans did not have the scholarship skills or intelligence to see as such a popular schools. Obama Morton and that incident often during the 2008 presidential election when she campaigned for her husband, Barack. She created the counselor's attitude to show how conventional expectations that people have about blacks can sometimes block down on the opportunities they should have and the appearances in the midst of Wisconsin. Obama said, All my life I had comforted people who had social expectations of me. Every step of the way, there was somebody telling me what I couldn't do. I implied to Princeton, You can't go there. Your test scores aren't high enough. I graduated with the Department of the Honors, and then I wanted to go to Harvard Law School, and that was probably. A little too tough for me. I didn't even know why they said that. Obama was accepting about Princeton, however, and turning the post segregation school was not e as easy as she had in Maine. Cherishing at Princeton. Michelle Obama experiences food problems adapting to the intelligence academy and social life at Whitney M. Lawn when the black students gradually outnumbered the white students going to Princeton. However, it proved to be a difficult chance. A bubble was one but only 94 African Americans out of the schools, 1,141 freshman students. For the first time in her life, Obama was living in a world in which there was many more white students than black students. There were also very few black teachers at Princeton. The same group of black students felt intentional from white students. That was because some white students acting in a, in a racist manner towards black or seen ill and easily wound down because they had never socialized with blacks before. In, Angel, Angel, Ike, a college roommate of Obama's said white students who share classes with blacks who pretended not to recognize them outside. Outside our class, it was like, here comes a black kid. H.C. Ekri says, Ekri says, of the attitude some white classmates have told her, had told her. The two, uh, co to the two college friends of Obama, Hillary Bell and Lisa F. Wallace, said some white students acting in the streets and insulting ways towards them. A lot of white students there had never had a white black students. They would not want to touch my hair, says Bell. White Wallace added, I cannot tell you the number of the times I was calling brown sugar. The 
unused to some rights felt towards blacks, including Obama's first roommate, or at least her roommate, family. When Obama arrived on campus in September 1981, she shared a dormitory room with Kathleen Donnelly, who was from Louisiana. When Donnelly told her family she had a black roommate, her mother was so upset that she demanded school officials bring her daughter to another room and even threatening to remove from her prison. Donnelly, Donnelly, however, said she did not mind that Obama was black. From the minute we met, I like her. He was a really smart black guy, black woman, who was found, who, found, who I find charmingly interesting and funny. However, Donnelly moved to another room at the end of the first testament. testament. Obama never knew what Donnelly's family had done until 2008, when a newspaper reporter contacted her after taking to Donnelly's family. Obama's response to the new to the report was, <coughs> "We, she, and Donnelly were never close, but sometimes that's the thing it says. That's that there's something that there's unease with blacks, but it's often on but it's often unspoken. There was an there was an incognite." as well as a racial barrier between students because most of the white students were from wealthy families and had much, more, and had much more money than Obama and other black students. The white, the, the, the whites were especially caused eight meals as an executive on campus, eating clubs, plates in which the only blacks was usually those put parents and serving food. Obama's working class parents were not, were, could not, could not afford her tuition months. That's how parents and other to attend parents. Obama had to abandon financially and fund the school and take out student loans for most of her four years. At Princeton, Obama shared a small documentary room with three African Americans from similar economic backgrounds. We may enjoy ex met. We were not rich. A lot of kids, a lot of kids had TVs and sofas and furnaces. We didn't, but they had, but they had lots of albums by Stevie Wonder. Obama's favorite musician, one in Venice, one in Venice, Obama had in going to Princeton was the credit was that Craig had already been there for two years and was a star on the school's basketball team. Although his campus fame helped Michelle gain some impressions with students, Craig claims it might have hurt her whole social life, he says. When she first got to Princeton, I was still there, and I think guys wouldn't date her just because they knew I was, I was her, but I was her brother. It had been easier growing up black in Chicago because Obama had always been surrounded by other African Americans. Back Princeton, she learned what it was like to be black in a country. Dunamis, Sosakali, Economicali, and Pelican County by whites. Find the whole race in depth in day. Obama and other black students at Princeton tended to hang out together at the Dole Wall Center, which the school had accessory as a graduate place for black, Hispanic, Jewish, and Asian students. The model and the students bound it together because they often felt naughty or uncomfortable around white students. The major on campus, Obama, admits that the center became a safe haven for black students. 
like herself, being one of the schoolest few African American students at the time. I find there wasn't many social opportunities for number more than theirs. Obama says, so we created a community within a community and got involved at places like the Dow War, like the Dow World Trade, Dow World Center. Although Obama and other African Americans studied and spent months of their free time at the center, they also socialized with white friends during one spring break. Obama and two women joined Jewish students. They knew on a skill trip, on a scout trip to Vermont. We were three black women on a trip with all of these white Jews, Jewish kids. Acre says, We stuck out like sore thumbs, but we had a great time. There was not a lot of time for having fun, however, because Obama was so busy studying and working, students who receive, who receive um, financial, financial, financial aid from the school had to work on campus to earn the money. Obama did not. Obama did that by accommodating it and at the school daycare center at the Doe Ward Center. When I wasn't studying, I was working. Obama said. Obama's experiences as a black student in a mostly white school affair was so so deeply that she decided to write about the race in the city of Dallas that was a requirement for graduation. It was talent, Princeton education blacks, and the black community to write it. Obama interviewed 400 black Princeton graduates about their experiences at the school and how it had affected their race, racial attitudes. Obama wore the Princeton Get Black and Quality Education that helped them achieve success in their shows fields. But she also knew it, but she also knew it that blacks often felt uncomfortable socializing them at Princeton and cleaning those uneasy their feelings were well, because the school seems to care more about white students. Obama pondered white universities like Princeton and our social county and academic medicality designed to call to 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 the names of the white students. A compassion compassion the buck buck without in one her dynamics knowing that during her time at Princeton, there were only, only there were only five black term professors, and the Afro African American American students program was one of the school's mothers and most under understaffed. Obama was not afraid to point out faults and how Princeton treated black students. She was also fearless when it came to criticizing in the way the school taught friends. Obama was so aggressive in telling friends teachers that sure is branching the feature of no, um conversation in class that her brother Craig became embarrassed. Obama's mother recalls Michelle's going Michelle's always been very vocal about anything. If it's not white, she's going to say so. When she was at Princeton, her brother called me and said, Mom, I just hell telling people they're not teaching French white. She thought the style was not conversational enough. I told him, just pretend you don't know her. Although Obama's time at Princeton showed her that the whites were snubbed, or because of the color of their, because of the color of whole skin. She also provided to herself that she could compete intensely with whites at one of the nicest female schools. That gave Obama the confidence to apply to Harvard Law School, the nation's most public graduation law school. 
Pablo Lasky, Charles J. Arditary, was a bombers investor at Harvard, Harvard, Harvard. He says by the time Obama began attending in Harvard in 1985, she had figured out what it meant to be an African American woman in a world dominated by whites, according to Arditary. Princeton was was a real cost war indefinite by Michelle. By the time she got got to Harvard, by the time she got to Harvard, she had answered the question. She could be both brilliant and black. The reason Obama decided to become a lawyer was also tied into her new new areas of her recent identity. She believed she could lose legal skills to help blacks and other poor people have a better life. In her person single let there is a race, she writes, There was no doubt there was no doubt in my mind that as a member of the black community, I was somehow alienated to this community and were analyzing all of my princes and future resources to benefit this current community first and foremost, the realization has previously made my goals to achieve realization of my resource to benefit the black community more disabled. Obama fulfilled her desire to help blacks by working for the Harvard Legal and Obama. One in uh, internally by law students. The bill provided legal assistance in <clears throat> several cases to poor people who cannot afford laws. Laws do this usually what 20, 20 hours a week. 20 hours a week for the bomber. A huge commitment, huge commitment, consideration of how hard those do this are. According to Archery, Archery, a bomber worked hard to help people. He says, she was a very delighted and tenacious student lover. He always put their whole clients first. While I told me what at the bottom of who Obama did, says students handle common legal problems, like landlord children disputes, disputes, and child custody, disabilities and disputes and divorces. Thornberry agreed that Obama took her work seriously and said she worked harder than almost anyone. He says the one thing he remembers most clearly about her is that she was not impressed with working students also work hard, she said. You think you're working hard and I think her attitude is. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. As at Princeton, Obama belonged to several African American organizations at Harvard, like the Harvard Black Black Law Law Journalists, who members were about legal issues, and the Black Law Student Association, which was merely a social club for African American students on the nearly all white campus. While Obama was at Harvard, students protest the low number of black students and teachers. Although Obama had never been never been very interested in politics classes, she went to at least one division to protest for war. African American factories men and members, Randall Kennedy, one of Obama's professors, claims that Obama shined away from public protests because or personality, personality, but she had a more menace, quality, lower profile. He said, instead of giving speechless at protests, Obama profits into quality research of blacks undergraduate undergraduates for Harvard Law and other schools to boost the number of African Americans. Obama earned her law of degree Harvard from Harvard Law School in 1988. She then returned home to Chicago to begin her career 
as a law with Seda and Austin. I feel going and fun not today as Sydney Elston LLP. Obama becomes a law. The other films, Sydney and Austin had lost law students each summer. It did it did that to get the students experiences and to assess their talent to see if they will be worth it harder when they graduate. Obama had walking there during the summer of 1987. The film liked her so much that her her little little and essentially her to the film's division that dealt with regular and copyright issues. The division's clients include companies that sold products regularly from automobiles to build to build as well as some of the producers. Versus funds of entertainment, including television shows. One of Obama's first important projects was to work on legal questions regards to with the making of Bella, a new change of show that became an instant hit. Even though Obama did not have experiences in that era of law, Andrew Goldstein, a lawyer who was working with her, says Obama caught on quickly and did a very good job. He was also expressed impression with her integrations and self confidence, which embodied her to defend her side of any argument. Goldstein says, "You don't know you don't want to underestimate her." At the age of twenty three, Obama was working as a lawyer in one of Chicago's most known legal firms. But in the next few years, events would turn her life upside down as she took the new directions in both her career and personal life. That's the end of the part, part one of this book, or chapter one and chapter two. Tomorrow, we'll be doing chapter one, I mean chapter three, and chapter four. That will be tomorrow. This book called Michelle Obama. I see you tomorrow in part two. I'm Chelsea Crowe.